This conference will now be recorded. Hello. Hello. A very good morning to all present here. Shall we start? And dear participants, shall we start? As expert speaker is with us. Sandeep sir, morning, Shruti ma'am. Ma yes, ma good morning. Obviously, we can start. Shall we start, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Definitely, ma'am. I would request Jaspreet Kaur to kindly introduce expert speaker of this session. Jaspreet, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Indrapreet Sandhu. I am Jaspreet on behalf of Department of Business Administration. GNDC Ludhiana, welcome you to this two-week FTP program sponsored by AICTE New Delhi AQUIS. Now, I would like to introduce our expert speaker, Dr. Indrapreet Sandhu. Dr. Indrapreet Sandhu has been working as a faculty in the Department of Psychology, Punjabi University, Patiala, since 2006. She has an extensive work experience both from India and Canada. Her research interest is in field of departmental psychology and counseling psychology, and she has been extensively working on adolescent identity issues. She has worked with various ministries in Canada on mental health projects. 
She worked in Canada with the Ministry of Children oh, and no, Family no, no. Development as a child and Youth Mental Health Clinical for a few years. She has also worked as a project lead for Child and Youth Mental Health Collaborative with Canadian Ministries on drug abuse issues. Also, she was an auxiliary constable with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, where she worked on crisis intervention programs and was a part of various advisory committees. She is a trained cognitive behavioral therapist from Canada and is working on various counseling projects. Currently, she has been appointed as a coordinator admissions, Punjabi University. She enjoys traveling, reading and poetry. Thank you so much, ma'am. Welcome you here and over to you now. Thank you very much for the introduction. It, I heard it yesterday also, so I'm, uh, I can mug up my own introduction now. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jaspreet, though. Uh, good morning, participants. Uh, welcome to a beautiful Saturday morning that I'm sure you could have done better by enjoying out in the sun. But seems like you are true learners and plan to uh, be a part of this program, this faculty development program, and rather spend your Saturday here. So I acknowledge the Saturday um, and I do welcome you all. And it'll be great in case you know you can interact with me like you did yesterday. I really appreciate that. And it was fun to you know uh, hear your views and see your text messages because it inspires uh, the, the the speaker as well. So I do appreciate your concerns and I do appreciate your disagreements as well. So I I, I mentioned yesterday uh, as well that, that uh, if you have a disagreement, if you have a different opinion, do bring it out because these faculty programs are meant for that. And kudos to the um, organizing team, Dr. Navdeep, Dr. Jaspreet, for putting this all together. So uh, my thanks to them as well for inviting me. Now, yesterday, uh, we talked about uh, outstanding, the qualities an outstanding teacher can have. And before I go further, just want to make sure, am I audible enough? I know I'm super visible because I have a, thank you, I have a light in front of me, which will go in like 20 minutes when the electricity goes out here, I hear. Uh, so you will not be able to possibly see me as clearly, but just wanted to make sure that you can hear me well. Um, in a minute, I will also start my PPT so that it is uh, it engages you. And as, as I said yesterday, that um, I oversimplified things so that there can be more interaction, nothing that you will not know already maybe some of the things will be new to make a perspective and uh, my little effort to inspire uh, my fellow colleagues in whatever way i can and also get inspired in return yesterday if you remember we left at that video because that would not pay and the time was up as well so if you guys only are willing then i can start that video but only if you are willing and if you i do understand if you want to talk, um, greatly appreciate it. But if you want to put that in the chat box, um, I'll take that as a yes or no. Can you see the PPT? Uh, can somebody say yes or no? Because I can only see the PPT on the screen now. I think I'll have to do the share screen. Share. Can you guys see the video, uh, the PPT now? Okay, perfect. I'll start with the slideshow from the beginning. No, eventually we are going to get to what paradigm means here because it is very interesting concept and I'm totally, totally excited for today's session as I was for yesterday's. Um, because that, uh, you know, sometimes brings so many new things uh, into perspective for all of us. But before we begin with the paradigm, let's uh, see if the video plays today. Can you hear it? Um, could you guys hear it? I put a new one, the same video, but a new one. Is it audible? Uh, 
it's not it's not audible yet oh, i don't know what's the problem here because i have my speaker and i changed it can you uh, turn on the speakers on your uh, uh, devices and let's see i'm going to play it and if it doesn't uh, if it is not audible let me know please okay here we go Is it audible now? Okay. Okay, seems like this video is not going to play. So let me... Um, Let me explain it in my own words. Maybe I, I, I it is meant this way. No, there's this story of a of a person of a teacher who goes to a wedding, and at the wedding, am I audible now? Can I have a quick yes no? Okay, perfect. Thank you. This teacher goes to a wedding, and at the wedding, he um, meets another person. And uh, this person asks the teacher, did you recognize me? And the teacher said, uh, well, no. Uh, this person says, then I must tell you the story and then you will be able to recognize who I am. So this person says that I, am, I have also become a teacher like you and you were the one who inspired me to be a teacher. So the teacher thinks for a moment, he doesn't recognize this person, but he said, okay, I will listen to your story. Um, this person uh, say, tells the teacher that I was your student uh, in school and in grade five, um, in, in our class, there was a child who brought a shiny, beautiful new wristwatch. And I also wanted to have a wristwatch, but I could not afford it. So what I did was steal that wristwatch. And everybody got to know that somebody has stolen the wristwatch. So uh, there was a complaint to the to, to the teacher, but nobody knew who, who stole this wristwatch. So this person says that, uh, you know, this teacher, he said, you actually asked everybody to line up and uh, close their eyes while he will go and search everybody's pockets um, for the wristwatch. He said, all of us lined up and I was very scared, almost scared to death because now I'm going to, uh, be in trouble, they will find out, and I will be insulted, and everybody is going to hate me later. But um, you asked us to line up, and you asked us to close our eyes, and then you went from one pocket to the other, to the third one, searching for the wristwatch. And even though you found that wristwatch with me, you still searched everybody's pockets, and when everybody's pockets were searched, you asked us to open our eyes. And you never let anyone know who was the person who stole that watch. And never for a day did you insult me, you never judged me, and you were always very nice to me. And that was my inspiration that I should also be a teacher because you kept my dignity that, that day. And you know what the teacher said? The teacher said that I have no idea that you were the one who stole the watch. Because while I was searching, uh, for the for this for this wristwatch, I had also closed my eyes. I did not want to know who is the student who who, who stole this watch. So he said, until now, I I I did not know that you were the one who stole that watch. So imagine the kind of teacher this person was, and the way he uh, you know corrected the behavior of the child, he corrected the behavior of his student, but at the same time he maintained his dignity. And there was this attitude of being non-judgmental. And that was, uh, I mean, if he had insulted, whoever knows what that student would have become. But because he maintained his dignity, still his behavior was corrected. He went on to become a teacher. He said, I wanted to be a teacher just like you so that I could inspire others, motivate others, and uh, you know, um, be of importance in bringing about change to the society. So I felt this was a very inspirational story in many ways 
because that really tells us about our job as a teacher. Because a lot of times you will hear people tell you uh, those this this saying those who can't become teachers. I'll repeat those who can't become teachers. That implies that those of us who cannot get into other important jobs they become teachers. Whereas you know our role as a teacher is of utmost importance because at all levels uh, we are the ones who are dealing with the society. And we are the ones who are bringing out the best or even the worst in our students. So I think in that sense, this was a beautiful story of how somebody can be, you know, really non-judgmental in their attitude and um, be of such value to the society. Would you agree with that? Yes or no? I'll just keep it to yes or no. Just if you can write it in the chat box, that will be helpful for me. And I will know that you guys are there. And you know, it is not just your hosts. Okay, thank you. Appreciated. All right. So um, now moving ahead, and again, uh, I will reiterate what I mentioned yesterday that if at any point you have any questions, queries, on and observations, I will be more than happy to take them. Don't hesitate to uh, ask me or stop me in between if you want to share something. Thank you, Dr. Sanjeev. Okay, you know, the, um, the title for today's uh, presentation or my little talk with you was Paradigm Shift for Teachers Professional Development. And I think it's Im absolutely important. So let's first see, as we saw yesterday, what those simple terms mean. Because um, it will be interesting and it will be helpful if all of us are on the same page for at least the definition of the things. So my question is, would you understand, what do you understand by paradigm? What do you mean by paradigm? Would anyone want to um, respond? I'll wait for a couple of seconds, few seconds. What, you know, when we talk about paradigm shift, what is a paradigm? Well, let me get going then. Now, when we say paradigm is one way of being, one set of being principles, concepts that have been formed over a period of time. So paradigm shift means an important change that happens when the usual way of thinking and doing something is replaced by a new and different way. Now, it is a change from one way of thinking to another. And paradigm shift happens everywhere. Any, any, you know, on earth, in your jobs, in your marriages, relationships, with your children, with your surroundings, with your health, just any which way. And if I can give you an example of paradigm shift, um, if you have, you know, known somewhere, if you've heard it, heard it somewhere, that at one time there was a paradigm that Earth is a square, and you can get to the edge of the world, the edge of the Earth, and then fall down. I'm sure you've heard about this. So there was this um, paradigm. That means that there was this concept, there was this way of thinking that Earth is square. And anyone who said Earth is not square, you know what was what happened to them? They were tried and executed. They were killed because uh, people at that at the time said that this was blasphemous. This was you know sacrilege. So they would they were killed. And I will not tell you the names of the scientists, but I will leave it to you to find it at some point. That and if you want me to, you know, tell me uh, in the chat box or unmute yourselves, I will appreciate that there were scientists who were executed. They were hanged to death because they said Earth is, you know, they said Earth is not at the center of the universe. Sun is at the center of the universe because the contemporary thinking at that time was that Earth is at the center of the universe. Happened. There was a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift from. Uh, saying that Earth was square to the Earth is uh, spherical. Do you think that paradigm shift came easy? It did not. It was difficult for people to accept what they had already known. 
and the same kind of paradigm shift is required by teachers today and i hear a lot of teachers being uh, worried being anxious because they think that this with this new paradigm shift which implies from going to the traditional class to the technological technology laden class uh, the teachers might be replaced our traditional teaching might be replaced by something which is more technological and we might become redundant and if you remember uh, right when corona was happening and uh, we were starting to use more online classes and more online mediums um you would hear from people all the time there were messages uh, amongst the teachers groups that teaching is going to be a redundant uh, um profession and a lot of teachers will be laid off because they will not require teachers anymore so you know that was they thought that this is the paradigm shift that is going to happen and the teachers jobs will be gone now do you agree or not just a question for you guys if you want to think about it so um again kind of bringing your attention to the paradigm shift that indian educational system had uh, during the ancient period to what it is now okay uh, my slides are visible i suppose so this is the kind of uh, system that we had the gurukul system if you uh, if you've read if you've heard where uh, students were supposed to go to monastery like residential schools you know residential like places where there was a guru there was a teacher and generally people from upper castes would go there and um, they would stay there for a few years and the purpose of the teacher of the guru was not only to provide uh, with them you know disseminate knowledge but also some kind of spiritual awakening so it was more inclusive in that sense so from the gurukul system which was one paradigm that was prevalent at one time in india to the paradigm of smart classrooms so do you do you see this this shift of course it did not happen abruptly but a paradigm shift from where you you know if you see um, it was more out in the open it was more maybe experiential in some ways to the contemporary system which is more which you know is is more technologically enhanced which is which integrates learning and technological de devices so you see that there is uh, uh, a lot of emphasis is placed on um using technology and you know if you see this paradigm shift now the old paradigm was more content centric the old paradigm was more Uh, about transmitting knowledge but this new paradigm if you see is more learner centric and i will want you to remember this that it's learn you know kind of uh, learning is more important now so on one side where um, this technology has given us flexible hours that you i'm sure some of you are sitting in your beds with your blankets and enjoying the talk so that make gives you more flexibility Uh, at the same time it has also created something called digital divide because people who have access to high speed internet are the ones who can get get start to at least get benefited from it you know so one has to see both the sides of this technology that uh, whereas you know uh, it is more active learning there is more flexibility while on the other side sometimes the experiential side of learning is gone and also um there is isolation because you are not with others and the studies have also report that there is something which is procrastination people have started to procrastinate more you know kahin na kahin hum aur zyada lazy ho gaye hain because you don't have to get ready you don't have to get dressed to go to the schools so or, or your you know colleges and your universities so somewhere it has that flexibility uh, it is up to us how we use it but studies do report that it has also increased procrastination in some way you know so i again want to bring your attention to this point where on one side it is um more traditional class while on the other side there's this use of technology and both of them have their own pros and cons so um have you guys heard about india's national education policy yes or no
thank you for your responses you have and it is very interesting to note uh, a lot of changes have actually happened in 2020 um and not that you know because of corona they did of course corona um you know pandemic had been one of the reasons but essentially um the the policies had been in place for a very long time thus they wanted to uh bring this into one second so that was one of the reasons they uh wanted to bring changes because they had they felt that some of the educational stuff had been uh, going on for a long time and this was redundant in some ways too and you know my dear colleagues it is very interesting to note what india's national policy today is and how it has become as i was mentioning before from uh, content uh, centered ki sirf mere ko education provide karni hai i only want to tell you this is your your book and you have to study from you know to giving you more experiential side of learning it is not only transmission of learning but also making it learning centered let me kind of you know before i go ahead with the national policy uh, let me give you two scenarios are you ready are you ready for the scenarios if i give you two scenarios okay who says yes yes thank you dr amandeep thank you dr jaspreet okay so two scenarios in scenario a we say and you know think about it and think about uh, who do you want to be so give me two fictitious names give me two fictitious names so we will call person a with one name and person b with another name any names that you like two fictitious names anonymous just they could just be anyone come on this is easy i'm sure you guys you know would know at least a million names so any any name that you uh can think of amti oh my god that's cute <laughs> oh, all right we are going to call one humpty and we are going to call one dumpty so uh, humpty dumpty did not sit on a wall but humpty dumpty went in 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 different colleges in different institutions so humpty uh, went to an institution uh, but both of them went to business schools so humpty went into a business administration course where there was uh, you know a great teacher there was a class of 250 students and humpty was supposed to study three four books this size big huge size books uh, and at the end of the uh, classes uh, there would be exams and humpty was going to be evaluated based on how he did on in the tests on those exams so he had to read all through a uh, big huge sized books i don't have any book right now so that i could show you so big huge sized books that he had and he had to read through them get all the knowledge uh, and then at the end of the session write uh, an exam and get evaluated based on that so his marking was on that right so that was humpty's story of life and then we have dumpty dumpty also goes to a business school but um, the kind of business school he goes to is different their teachers there are not you know as many students for one there are smaller groups groups of uh, 25 to 30 students and instead of only giving them books books are one part of them but they were sent right away on some kind of training in an actual company and in that company they were given a real life problem let's say the problem was um there was a lot of uh, employee absenteeism let's just suppose or uh, people would were not punctual so a real life problem was there and uh, dumpty and three more people so a group of four people had to work on this real life problem and uh, come up with a solution and present the solution to the to the teachers and of course to the company and make a project report and dumpty was going to be evaluated dumpty and his friends 
were going to be evaluated based on the project report. So now when the session finishes, let's say the, the, the session is for two years. So after two years, Humpty and Dumpty sat on a wall and they started discussing about their respective fields, uh, how their experiences were. Uh, what do you think uh, would be, who would think that they were more happy and more uh, had more information and more experience uh, after two years of attending the MBA course, Humpty or Dumpty? Who do you think was uh, would have more experience, more information, and more confidence? Was this story clear to you? What was this story uh, of Humpty and Dumpty? Did you understand this? At least yes or no for that. Wake up people, I don't mind you having your cup of tea or coffee or whatever, but let's be awake for this time so that you have you know, you make the best of your time and I make use of, you know, the best of my time. Could you hear me at least? Okay. So if you think, you know, in one case, uh, okay. So um, in one case, the focus was only on uh, mugging up the books. There was no experience related with that. But in the case uh, of the person B, the emphasis was as much on learning, as, as much on gaining information, as much there was on gaining experience from the field as well. So, you know, if you see, if you uh, give this story to your students, almost all of them want to be a part of that school where they are provided experience as well. And it is not only based on the book knowledge. So what does the India's national uh, you know, ed education policy say? Interesting, I have it on the next page. Yeah, so interesting to note that uh, the education policy lays special emphasis on the development of creative potential please mind the word creative potential uh, of each individual and productivity of course and now this policy is based on the principle that education must develop not only your cognitive capacities of course you need to have more information of course you need to have your you know your foundational capacities of literacy and numeracy uh, at the same time, your critical thinking, your problem solving skills, uh, your social, ethical, emotional capacities and dispositions, they should also be honed. They should also be chiseled. Why? Because, uh, you know, when you are done with your school, now you go to with your college or university. If you only have bookish knowledge, but you don't have any idea when two colleagues fight, how do you resolve the issue? And I'm sure all of us go through that period, you know, where you feel that there was a conflict at workplace. You, it, it is easier for us to get into that conflict, but almost impossible to get out of get out of it. So imagine places, your uh, educational institutions, also providing you with uh, you know sufficient skills, where you not only know your uh, you know subject well, but you also know how to deal with your emotions. You also know how to be, you know, more aware about who you are and how to resolve the issues when they get, when, when you get into that situation. So this is the kind of new paradigm where uh, they say that it is not only the, uh, you know, the ability to be able to reproduce what you have learned, but also the ability to manage your emotions well. You know, the emotion, be self-aware be able to regulate yourself, have empathy for yourself as well when you have empathy for your colleagues. So this uh, ability to able to understand 
and uh, overcome your stress overcome your uh, challenges is as important according to this policy so is is everybody here can somebody say yes or no so that again i'm not keeping myself alone thank you rimal thank you very much and dr navdeep so um, and i brought this this issue of national policy here so that when you are designing your lectures my dear colleagues when you are developing your content you include these concepts as well because these are the concepts that have uh, been put in the national education policy you know in bold words they have written that it is the development of the creative potential that is why i think it was important to have yesterday's uh, talk where you know we get inspired and we know that there are new things that we can include in our teaching and um, trust me today's talk uh, is very interesting and i'm going to show you as as we move further about many various uh, institutions that have been using such cool ideas and um, i'm really excited so just stay with me if you don't want to respond that's okay but if even if you you know listen intently for a few minutes i'm sure you will get something out of it so when you are preparing your lectures keep this in mind that the aim of ed education now is not only preparing the children uh, for their job lives but also for their lives in general and also you know for realization of their selves of there is also an aspect of spirituality in the national education policy where they say that there has to the teachers also help the also have to help the uh, the students to realize and liberate themselves which i think is a very a revolutionary in its own way and you know if you see india has produced a number of great uh, researchers like um, chanakya great scholars like charaka patanjali nagarjuna you name it and you know aryabhat who not uh in the field of science in the field of technology chess games but uh and and there was a time when you know uh, we had institutions like takshila like nalanda vikramshila and people from far and beyond would come to india to study that was the kind of paradigm we had and you know such inspirational things to say and if you go into the history of the nalanda universe nalanda um university i mean i mean only say using the word university because at the time it was called i mean you know vishwavidyalaya and they said that it uh, burned for months together the kind of information the kind of books we had there when the invaders came they said that you know this is a great place these guys are learned scholars and how do we destroy them let's destroy their culture let's um destroy their books and that library burned for months together and such interesting facts to know and get inspired from that we had such great literature we had such great field of arts and now if we think when was the last time really you know somebody in india um you know created something new or innovated something that shook the world and not that we are any less we absolutely are not but what is it that sometimes pushes us you know pulls us back and doesn't really push us forward something to note okay um let me go on the next slide so let's have a paradigm shift for creative learning environments i'm going to pose three questions to you and will want you to stay with those questions during the uh, you know course of the day so आप अपनी क्लास में क्या माइक्रो चेंजेस लेके आ सकते हैं हम मैक्रो की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं छोटे छोटे चेंजेस बेस्ड ऑन द एजुकेशन पॉलिसी व्हाट आर द माइक्रो चेंजेस दैट माय वेरी डियर कोलीग्स कैन ब्रिंग टू देयर क्लासरूम्स टू एंगेज द स्टूडेंट्स मोर कंसीडरिंग की डिजिटल डिवाइड है यू नो सम ऑफ योर स्टूडेंट्स विल हैव सुपर ग्रेट एक्सेस टू इंटरनेट वाइल अदर्स विल नॉट सो यू नो देन वी डिस्कस्ड येस्टरडे दैट देयर इज अ रेंज Uh, of students from being super you know gifted talented to being slow learners ab hamare paas ek aur divide bhi hai students who have super access to high speed internet to the students who don't have that 
uh, uh, that they don't even have devices in the first place. Leave aside the internet connection. So what? How can you engage those students so that you know? Um, what kind of changes can you bring to your teaching, or what can you do to engage the students more, considering the digital divide? Next. Now, because national policy says it is not only the education dissemination of education, it is also to develop the creative potential and also to help them liberate the cells. So, what would my um, dear colleagues do to increase the self-esteem and motivation of the students, considering that they are not present in front of you? Aapke saamne to wo students nahi hai. So, what can you do to motivate them? Considering they are sitting in far off places, वो बिल्कुल वैसे behave करते हैं जैसे आप लोग अब कर रहे हैं. So the, you know now that you are in that student uh, zone uh, for a few days, you you can imagine, you can more appreciate how your students uh, would feel uh, when they are not present in front of you. And then by the end of this lecture, I really want my fellow colleagues to think about at least three things. That you would want your students to get at the end of your course. आप जो भी पढ़ा रहे हैं, it is important. The, you know, in, in dissemination and sharing of information is important. But apart from the knowledge of the subject that you taught, what are three things that you would really want your students to know at the end of the end of your class, uh, considering that you are preparing them for greater world outside? Okay, so. Um, these three things and if you want to uh, you know talk about them and um, raise any uh, question or have an observation i'll be more than happy to uh, take that into consideration so i'll give you a few seconds to grasp this what is written on this slide and then we move further i've got some really interesting uh, facts for you guys especially related to some of the coolest schools including in india a quick yes or no did you guys at least read uh, these questions just a yes or no did you read these questions that is thank you dr ripudaman all right let's go to the next one thank you dr jadhav okay this is one of my favorite slides you know we always say that we have problem students we have problem students so how can we uh, turn these problem students or problems into solutions because it is easier to complain to blame to escape go to say that i don't have the resources i don't i cannot do anything i have hardly uh, you know i hardly get paid and the like but there's always something if you are uh, interested if you really have intent in doing then those problems themselves can give you uh, solutions for the problems so this smiley here i think speaks a lot to us that how can we uh, develop our problems into solutions so are you ready with for some of the fun schools uh, fun institutions that i want to discuss with you are you ready for that yes or no okay let's see who says thank you dr ripudaman she's ready so two people are more ready today dr jadhav and dr ripudaman what happened to the others you don't have your Tea or coffee with you? Okay, so the fun starts now. Where um, you know, sometimes we get so busy with our lives that we don't get uh, time to know about other institutions which are working as hard and in different unique ways, and actually, you know, uh, have made huge paradigm shifts. And a paradigm shift happens when you are um, interested in doing things differently. Because you want to make things work, you want to have uh, solutions for for your problems versus only talking about the problems. So here we go. Okay, there is the school. Let me talk about a few schools, and I'm uh, 
sure they will be inspiring in so many ways. There is this uh, yellow train school in um, Coimbatore, which you know is not a traditional school in the in the sense because it focuses on the development of the child rather than on the development of a textbook. So they will have open fields, you know, children can walk, so they provide more experiential kind of learning where uh, students will go and play out in the open, they will have interaction with the wildlife, uh, they will be given, uh, and a lot of emphasis in the school, I hear, has been given to the emotions of the children. Uh, like one of the things I can share, they say on Fridays, they will ask, all the students to write a letter to themselves mentioning uh, what what were the three things at least three things that they did during the week that they were really proud of so imagine writing a letter to yourself it brings out you know hope in yourself it gives you that confidence that oh yes i did something nice this week and you're writing it to yourself and i'm not too sure you know if you've ever done this or ever because in this fast paced life, we get so occupied doing things, um, you know, busy. Uh, and, you know, there's a saying that you are busy being busy. So we get so busy and so occupied that we don't give as much time to ourselves. And in the process, we completely forget who we are. And that gives rise to a lot of mental health issues, which I will discuss later as well. So the point here is that, you know, this school is focusing not only on the uh, uh, cognitive development of the children, but a holistic development where the teachers uh, get into the emotional side of the, the of the children as well, and they try to understand them and go at their level and understand. So imagine, you know, if you're dealing with a 10 year old, you first have to feel like, what does it feel to be 10 year old? So in our case, if you're dealing with students who are 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, so what, what are the feelings of a person who's 20 years old or a 21 year old? How are their issues going to be different from, from our issues when we are, you know, we, when we have crossed that age? So uh, another school, super exciting, super inspirational is uh, Loktak Lake School in Manipur. Have you guys uh, heard about the word Loktak or Loktak Lake? Say yes or no, I've really worked hard for this uh, putting these slides together guys i'll be very happy in case you can um, interact you haven't okay very exciting and if at any time in your life uh, you get a chance you must visit it i haven't visited personally but i have friends who have visited so these are after the session if you want go google on loktak lake it is actually the largest freshwater lake of india kbc question for you guys those of you who you or those of you who are preparing um so these are uh, floating pieces of land in a lake imagine your house you have a house on the lake but it floats all the time so now um you know some people in the area found and because it's a freshwater lake largest one so what do you think would be the profession of the people there they would be fishermen most of them so they realized that the children of these, uh, you know, fisher folks, they were unable to send their children to school. अब वो तो यहाँ पे पानी के ऊपर रह रहे हैं. पानी के ऊपर वो कैसे अपने बच्चों को स्कूल में भेजेंगे? Because school is somewhere, you know, far off. So what they did, uh, some people, some people like you, inspirational, uh, you know, revolutionary, they made a school in the uh, in the center of this lake. So it is a floating school. So that the children can come and be uh, and be able to attend the school in the middle of that lake. So floating huts hai. So imagine, you know, uh, you look into the needs of the locals. You look into the needs of that local population because otherwise, वहाँ पे बच्चे पढ़ी नहीं पा रहे थे क्योंकि उनके parents कहते थे कि आपको, you know, uh, we will rather you um, go fishing with us. Help us with the work, or up to Pandejai ni Satyo. So they created that school in the middle of the uh, of the lake called uh, a floating school. So I'm sure that will be quite some interest and fun to be able to study at the same time and do whatever you are doing. Did you 
डोंट यू थिंक इट इज इंस्पिरेशनल इन इट्स ओन वे बिकॉज इट इज इजियर टू से अरे वहां पे तो नहीं पढ़ पढ़ ही नहीं सकते जब सारा दिन फिशिंग ही करनी है कोई स्कूल वहां पे टीचर थोड़ी कोई आएंगे इतनी दूर क्योंकि आप तो एक लेक पे फ्लोट कर रहे हैं आप एक खट में हाउ डू यू हाउ डू यू स्टडी हाउ डू यू गेट शॉर्ट बट दे वेंट बियॉन्ड दैट एंड ब्रॉड दो स्कूल देयर ओके लेट मी टेल यू अबाउट अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग स्कूल देन देर इज द स्कूल कॉल्ड इगेलिया प्री स्कूल which is founded in uh, stockholm sweden and uh, this school is unique in its own way because this is one school which they have made gender neutral these guys uh, they said you know boys can do the same kind of work that the girls can do and the girls can do what boys can do so in this school the the children uh, young children they are not supposed to call other each other by he or she she did it he did it but rather they so in their efforts to make you know the word more egalitarian the word the word more um, you know kind of gender neutral and not really be binary uh, such a school was created so if somebody wants to go and um, know you know know about the school uh, you must uh, another school called big picture learning school that is in the uh, road island super exciting school because it is less of a school and more of a training so you know what they do is if you want to study um, let's say uh, aircraft building they will rather than teaching you in the class they will actually take you to the person who builds aircraft and you will be mentored under under that person so imagine that you know you wanted to be a great chemist you wanted to be a great physicist or you wanted to be the next shakespeare and you actually got to get trained by shakespeare and a great physicist and a, and a great uh, you know botanist so these children learn their uh, you know creative side by being mentored by the people who are already in the industry which gives them that they are already in the field so that gives them really a great experiential side of learning because everything is right in front of them so if this person in the picture they have to learn about aircraft designing they are learning it from the person who's making it i think this is super exciting okay um two or three more schools i will want to discuss there's one school which is called this uh, uh, smart school in maharashtra so um a question for you when your students bunk classes and go to somebody's house to watch movies or play video games what do you do aapki class ka time hai but students bunk your classes and they have gone to you know play with their friends in their house and watch tv or play video games and stuff to aap kya karenge i'm sure you will not be happy you will not be happy and maybe some of us will complain and be angry and frustrated and tell the students they are of you know no good no, no use and the like so this guy who started the smart school he faced a similar problem where his uh, students would bunk classes to watch tv at somebody's house so this teacher actually started going to that same house and started watching tv with them started playing video games with them so um uh, then what he did eventually with the little amount of money they had uh, they asked people to donate computers so he felt that these set of students were more interested in learning through technology so after getting one computer which was donated they could get more computers and uh, making use of whatever little resources they had um, they were able to replace the textbooks with the computers so kids were happy that they were getting to work on the computers because that is what they enjoyed and at the same time they were learning so they did not have to bunk the classes so which i think was a smart move because again the idea is to be able to um, make the students interact versus pushing them away um another interesting school and you know ye sab schools india mein hai except for a couple of them jo road island wala tha aur jo sweden wala tha so at least jo india wale schools hai wo to unke bare mein to hame pata hona chahiye because you know we can also build on those models Whoever knows, you know, आप में से भी कोई इस मॉडल पे काम करना चाहेगा 
दिस द स्कूल कॉल्ड अनन्या स्कूल अब इसमें वॉट दे डेड वॉज यू नो इट वॉज मेंट फॉर चिल्ड्रन हु वर अंडर प्रिविलेज जिनके पेरेंट्स दे वर लेबर और द मदर्स वर मेज और द चिल्ड्रन केम फ्रॉम एब्यूसिव फैमिलीज अब इस स्कूल में क्या प्रॉब्लम थी सबसे मतलब स्कूल में नहीं द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ द लेबर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ द अंडर प्रिविलेज उनकी ये प्रॉब्लम थी द फॉर वन द पेरेंट्स डिड नॉट वॉन्ट देयर चिल्ड्रन टू गो टू स्कूल बिकॉज दे वॉन्टेड दैम टू वर्क so there was no inclination from the side of the parents to uh, make their children study or get education aur bachche bhi padhna nahi chahte the the students did not want to study the children did not want to study to so, kya karega qazi but in this case the things went different you know the um, dr bhandari i will come to this because i know one person who works on this open book system would you mention that a uh, doctor Uh, Rajiv Thangiani. He will. He is from. Um, he is from Canada, KPU, KPU University, and he is actually doing a lot of work on open book system. And he, you know, in his uh, institution, he is actually revolutionized that. Where he says it is important to, you know, know the concept, even though you are doing it from your books, so we can make the books more. We can put the questions in a more critical manner. But give the books to students. So good. I'll I'll talk about that if we get time. But if you want, you can uh, read Dr. Rajiv Thangiani's work. Um. So you know, I was talking about the school Ananya, where uh, the students did not want to study, uh, make want the children to study, or बच्चे भी पढ़ना नहीं चाहते थे. But आप पढ़ाना चाहते हो. आप क्या तरीके करेंगे? बताइए. आप चाहते हैं कि वो पढ़ें. But कोई इंटरेस्टेड ही नहीं है. और आपके पास जगह भी नहीं है पढ़ाने के लिए सो यू नो यू विल से एवरीथिंग थिंग इज अगेंस्ट मी तो कुछ भी नहीं हो सकता ना तो वो बच्चे पढ़ना चाहते हैं ना उनके पेरेंट्स पढ़ाना चाहते हैं और ना ही मेरे पास ऐसा कोई स्कूल है कोई ऐसी जगह है जहां मैं पढ़ा पाऊं पर मेरा मन करता है कि ये स्टूडेंट्स पढ़ लें देन वॉट आर यू गोइंग टू डू सो यू नो ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल दे सेट दैट you know we want to do something फॉर द स्ट्रीट चिल्ड्रेन एंड वी वॉन्ट टू मेक एजुकेशन इंक्लूसिव सो दे स्टार्टेड taking these children to the parks pehle unhone apne ghar mein bulaya then they said let's take these children to the parks and make them uh, and just talk to them so badi interesting cheeze thi unke paas kaise baatein karne lage okay uh, what do you now the light has gone uh, they would mention let's talk about uh, um, anything that you want to tell tell us kisi bhi cheez pe baat karo सो so, जैसे एक दिन एक बच्चे ने आके बोला दैट ओ यू नो इन दे वर वॉचिंग टीवी सो दे वु डू एनी थिंग एंड एवरी थिंग बिकॉज दीज दीज पीपल हु वॉन्टेड टू टीच एंड एजुकेट वॉन्टेड टू एंगेज द स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट पहले उनकी वो उस स्पेस में जाना चाहते थे ताकि वो uh, उन, उनसे बात करना शुरू करें सो देर वॉज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन सो वन डे चाइल्ड सेड दे वर वॉचिंग टीवी एंड द चाइल्ड सेड ओ इंडिया नीड्स ओनली फोर रन टू एन सो वहां से उन्होंने उठाया द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सब्रैक्शन सो वेन यू से फोर रन टू वेन हाउ मेनी रन आर देर हाउ मच यू नो देन अदर्स स्टार्टेड टू गेट एजुकेटेड दैट वे सो वट एवर ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ इंटरक्शन ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ द डिस्कशन दे वुड कम अप विद आइडियाज वेयर दे वुड एंगेज एंड देन स्टार्ट टीचिंग इंटेलिजेंटली तो यू नो अगेन जो हमारी नेशनल पॉलिसी बात कर रही है टू गेट to tap into the creative potential and not only to tap into the creative potential of my students but also the creative potential of my my very dear my uh, very dear teachers because you know if my teachers are not as creative to wo shayad mere students mein utna imbibe bhi nahi ho payega so ananya is one school and i think it is you know kind of very exciting the last school that i wanted to discuss is uh, akshar school और ये अक्षर स्कूल भी है ये गुवाहाटी में है एंड यू नो यू सी दैट कोई स्कूल महाराष्ट्र में है कोई मणिपुर में जाके है नॉर्थ ईस्ट में ये गुवाहाटी में भी नॉर्थ ईस्ट में में ही है सो व्हाट दे डू इन दिस अनन्या स्कूल सुपर एक्साइटिंग थिंग दैट द ओल्डर स्टूडेंट्स इन द स्कूल दे टीच दे ऑल्सो टीच देर यंगर दंगर स्टूडेंट्स सो उससे क्या होता है 
कैन यू इमेजिन कि एक तो वन टू वन इंट्रैक्शन होती है बिकॉज टीचर कैन ओनली टीच ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द एंटायर लर्निंग प्रोसेस सो जो सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट है वो तो स्टूडेंट के हाथ में है सो वॉट दिस स्कूल डज इज दे विल एवरी स्टूडेंट इन द स्कूल इज अ टीचर एवरी स्टूडेंट and they the the model is to employ these older children as well and engage them so these older students will tutor their younger uh, younger uh, friends their uh, juniors and we will will also help them to uh, come up with in, innovative ideas aur jaise yahan pe likha bhi hai slide mein uh, if you see the uh, tuition fees for this school is plastic waste they don't charge you anything but whatever plastic is available around you have to bring it and they recycle it and do and you know they will do different things with it with it so imagine engaging the students to that level where they know about the grassroots problems and they also know how they can engage and they can contribute into that isn't that very exciting i was very inspired by all this can i have a few uh, responses please you know i think in these schools uh, when you are teaching your younger students as a student yourself you will also feel confident aap mein bhi communication skills develop hote hain ek confidence aata hai self esteem badhti hai sabse important cheez leadership quality aati hai जो शायद पहले नहीं आएगी तो आई थिंक लेट मी गो या सो एक लीडरशिप क्वालिटी आती है एक लीडरशिप का एक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑल दीज व्रांसफॉर्मेशनल देर वॉज अ पैराडाइम शिफ्ट इफ यू सी यू नो अ काइंड ऑफ पैराडाइम शिफ्ट जहां पे वो ट्रेडिशनल क्लासेस नहीं है बट इंपॉर्टेंट इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट वॉज दैट स्टूडेंट्स रियली लर्न वाइल दे आर Uh, getting educated next um okay so if we you know we really want to have this paradigm shift we need to know that there is not only one kind of um, intelligence that is there aur hame kya lagta hai ki jo bacche ka bas iq bahut tez hai wo maths ki problems solve kar sakta hai fast or my child can solve science ki problems fast he is an intelligent child but according to one of the theories of intelligence um, in you know psychology and there was this person called gardner who gave it and very interesting so he said there is not one kind of intelligence you can be intelligent in different ways i mean you know imagine somebody of you is very intelligent in musical uh, in, in in music so you know uh, how to make musical notes and somebody who's doing maths will not be able to do it or you know is not able to do it or can do it as well and somebody is not very good with mathematics but is very good with people skills they know how to um, you know uh, get into interpersonal communication and um, interact <coughs> interact with one another so when i'm teaching my students it is important for me to acknowledge and cultivate this and again going back to the education policy the national education policy ki aap usko kaise hone karte hain kaise creativity ko hone karte hain you know you cultivate in uh, creativity if only you acknowledge ki kuch log hote hain they are very smart with you know nature smart naturalists hote hain unse aap pahadon ki baat kare फॉरेस्ट की बात करें हर्ब्स की बात करें प्लांट्स की बात करें दे कैन टेल यू सो मेनी थिंग्स एंड समबडी एल्स इज वेरी स्मार्ट विद द पोएट्री विद वेरी स्मार्ट विद लिटरेचर सो दैट मींस ऑल ऑफ अस हैव डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ इंटेलिजेंसेस इट इज नॉट ओनली वन काइंड ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस दैट डिफाइंस मेरा आईक्यू टेस्ट पे 110 आ गया था आई एम गिफ्टेड एंड दैट इज अबाउट इट आई कैन हैव यू नो आईक्यू टेस्ट पे लोअर आईक्यू but at the same time i can be very smart with dance you know kinesthetic meri bahut achhi bodily kinesthetic intelligence bahut achhi ho sakti hai you will see some people can learn dance so fast though they might not be very good with language 
or somebody can learn language very fast but might not be very uh, intelligent in um, finding out the maps aur kuch log hote hain unki jo spatial intelligence hai visual intelligence bahut fast hoti hai aur wo gps ko itne aaram se they can you know or they can read from the maps very fast so that means we have different kinds of intelligences and as a teacher it is my role to uh, identify in my students the kind of intelligence there is so that i can hone that i can cult help them cultivate their intelligence and that will bring the paradigm shift jahan pe maine ek cheez ko pakad ke nahi rakha and my dear colleagues you know um, when paradigm shift is happening sometimes we are not aware of it we only get to know about things in retrospect जब आप हिस्ट्री बना रहे होते हैं ना आपको नहीं पता होता कि आप हिस्ट्री बनाने वाले हैं यू आर जस्ट डूइंग थिंग्स एट द टाइम सो लाइक वाइज यू नो वेन यू आर डूइंग द राइट थिंग्स फॉर योर स्टूडेंट्स यू यू नो इट इज नॉट गेटिंग इमीडिएट रिजल्ट्स। यू डोंट नो दैट चाइल्ड आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स माई रियलाइज दिस इज वॉट माई टीचर ऑल्सो टोल्ड मी एंड आई मस्ट कंटिन्यू डूइंग डूइंग दिस सो आई थिंक दिस इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी नीड टू ब्रिंग to cultivate intelligence to bring that paradigm shift are my teachers with me can i go on the next slide yes or no i'm waiting my dear my dear teachers somebody's response is dr pandari thank you Okay, Dr. Gadav. So you know now my question to you is, what are the conditions that you can create for your students where their natural talents can fly? How do you think you can revolutionize the learning process? And considering <clears throat> right now the challenge is even deeper, it is even bigger. because technology has come in place and you are not physically present but again some some someone out of us is going to do something revolutionary with this aspect as well so think about the conditions that you can create for your students but before that you have to create those students for yourself because if oh, because if you uh challenge yourselves and you try to bring your own creative side only then can you create something else for the students otherwise it will be all you know talk and no action so i really want my teachers to think about what creative things that they can take up kaun si cheeze hain you know maybe you wanted to learn music or dance or pottery or a drawing or stitching or knitting or whatever why why not do it because if you do it you will be able to inspire your students you know in a very natural organic manner so that is what my contention is for my very dear teachers okay next one ye slide mere ko lagta hai bahut important hai because um you know it is important to get feedback on my own teaching practice also if i want to bring the paradigm shift for my own personal development so that mean that you know let me ask you a question do i need to recognize my own weaknesses in classroom classroom and practice and then allow for improvement ya mere ko lagta hai ki wo jo pee pee le panne maine likhe hue hain wo sab times ke liye you know for all the times to come that is what i'm going to use or can i actually get some feedback from my colleagues and if not colleagues um my students or just from my own self to find out if uh i also need constant improvement those micro changes in my own teaching style also so that i become more uh i'm more receptive and my students also become more receptive and i came across this um um you know a sentence which i think was very empowering that a flaw in our teaching is not a flaw in us you know if you are not able to teach well some days or maybe some more than some days it does not mean that there is a flaw in you it can always be changed it can always um the shift can always happen 
and that shift will only happen if you are able to identify your strengths and your areas where you think that there is scope for improvement so only then uh, that will come and let me come to the last slide which i had saved uh, for the last it is not the least but because uh, i think that is the whole gist of it you know if that thing is not available whatever is coming in the next slide then i think everything else will take a back seat are you ready for that should i show you the last slide Okay. Okay. So the next slide actually says very simple, seemingly simple. My teacher's mental health. You know what they used to say: teaching to बहुत आसान सा profession है. इसमें कोई stress नहीं होता. There is hardly any anxiety. इसमें क्या है आपको जाके वो ही सेम पेपर आपको बार बार पढ़ा देना है इसमें आपको क्या स्ट्रेस होता है डू यू एग्री दैट टीचिंग इज विदाउट एनी स्ट्रेस यू नो ऑल दंसेप्शन आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू यूज द मिसकनसेप्शन दैट इज फॉर यू टू डिसाइड दे आर मिसकनसेप्शन एक्चुअली दैट यू नो दो कांट एंड अप बींग इन टीचिंग एंड टीचिंग इज अ वेरी ईजी टीजी प्रोफेशन एंड नो हार्ड वर्क और नो यू नो देर इज no challenge really required i mean it is easy to be a teacher teacher ban jao usme koi stressful job nahi hai bas aapko itne ghante jana hai padhana hai wapas aa jana hai do you agree with that i think i would um and i i say that also because there is evidence and research in the area there was a study that was done in uk recently and they said that um it revealed that one third of the education professionals are expected to leave their jobs in the next one or two years such as the kind of uh, pressure they are feeling i think there is again a lot of anxiety there is lot of depression and sometimes there is a lot of bullying as well you know people are people everywhere whether they are in teaching profession or they are in administrative or other professions they are just so that population is evenly uh, distributed as well so to say or to close our eyes and say that hamare teachers mein to koi bhi issues nahi hai this is i think not the right way of approaching the issue so i think there is a huge need to highlight the issues of uh, teachers mental health as well to check for any signs because if my teachers are stressed out if they are going through a huge uh, you know stress then um, they will that will be reflected in their teaching as well that will be reflected in their content development as well so first of all do you agree with that the teachers of course you know as as other professionals also go through uh, issues of mental health where they feel stressed out they feel depressed they might feel anxious do you agree with that okay so um in the last 10 odd minutes that we have i will really want you to tell me what can we do to improve the mental health of the teachers agar evidence if research is to be believed and you know there is a huge number they say uh, of uh, um, educationists and professionals who are working in education in the field of education and who are experiencing such issues and who might want to leave this profession that means there is something that we want to do you know in ideal world i will want my teachers to be as happy as this uh, young lady in this slide is and be inspired and excited but agar aap khud hi inspired nahi hai agar aap ne khud hi life pe aap you know you've given up any hope in life will you be able to imbibe or inculcate or um throw anything into your students lives and we are saying ki students ki lives you know they are more encompassing uh, not only focusing in one area but hame to unki social emotional cognitive uh, ethical sari capacities ko increase karna hai hone karna hai so what can we do and you know that's my last uh, question 
for today's session. And if you can give me some responses, we can wind this up. Practicing yoga every day could be one solution for mental health peace. Okay, so that means a uh, great point. So doesn't that mean to look after yourselves? Looking after ourselves is as important as looking after others. As care providers, you know, sometimes we um, give more importance to others and forget about our own selves. So self-compassion, my dear uh, colleagues, is very important. You know, having compassion for yourselves, keeping some time for yourself. I know all of us have those meetings and they run from, uh, you know, nonstop from one hour to the other one, running in between. But keeping some time for yourself, taking those little breaks is important as well. So that, you know, like eating on time, simplest of things. And um Spending some time introspecting about yourself as well. I think that is a take break from all the gadgets. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think uh, uh, Dr. Joshi, Dr. Aarti Joshi's, you know, what she's saying is very important because it, it, is, it is a way of life. Having all the gadgets with us all the time has become a way of life. But how can we take those little breaks? And it requires, again, a paradigm shift. As I said, I have told you what I If I can you know, quickly go back on my first slide, uh, we had a paradigm shift. Ki baat ki thi. We said paradigm shift is a change from one way of thinking into another, and it applies to everything on earth. It's not just education ki field, it's not just in your job, in your relationships, in your life, in your health. Ki life mein. So, Corona has told us this, I'm sure. Ki, uh, health is really the wealth. Agar jaan, jaan hai, jahan hai. And I think, you know, bahut choti -choti hai, but those small incremental things can go a long way. So that paradigm shift does not only happen in the educational system. Wo paradigm shift mere apni life se start hota hai. It starts from how I am with my family. Am I giving enough time to my family, my children, you know, my friends even, or to myself? Or all the time I'm engrossed in my technology and my work. Because we have a lot of the professional work that we have Because it's a different way of, the paradigm has shifted. So that's why we have a different way of working on a different way. And it is challenging. It is not easy. I mean, it's not easy for me to talk to myself for so many hours. But then, you know, that's, that's the way it is. And I consciously then make decision Either I go for a walk, I uh, you know walk on the bare feet, walk bare feet on the grass for a few minutes. That grounds me. So everybody, each one of us, to have our own uh, sanity, our own uh, best of mental health, we have to find our own chi, uh, as it is called, that area where we know that this is the best way we can be. किसी जो भी आपको अच्छा लगता है, but थोड़ा सा वो time ज़रूर निकालिए अपने लिए। चाहे you know that time could actually be watching something on Netflix, चाहे gadget भी use करना है, you know something to take that stress off your mind. And I will really request the organizers to have one session only on the teachers' mental health, क्योंकि ये सबसे ही important area है uh, for us today, where uh, अगर हमारी uh, physical health के साथ mental health का balance नहीं है they are out of the whack, then everything is out of the whack. And that's my little uh, prayer for all, all of us who've joined here today, that we, um, you know, go from our fears to faith. You know, from being scared to do things differently, but the things that are right and need to be done. So let's move from fear to faith and uh, have self-compassion as well. You know, having compassion for others is important, but having faith and empathy and self-compassion is as important. So with those words, I will wind, like to wind up the session and thank you everybody for listening and cooperating and uh, interacting the best way. So thank you. If you have any questions or observations, I'm here for the next five minutes.
I hope that at least for today you have this big smile as this smiley here. Smiling or having that little humor doesn't hurt anyone. So I wish that you guys have a happy Saturday. Uh, Dr. Gaurav, I, you know, um, it's a great question, how to deal with non-responsive students. So, Jesse, um, you know, why I uh, mentioned about all these schools, Jesse Ananya school ke mein bataya, where the students are not interested, non-responsive, the parents are non-responsive as well. So, they started having discussions with them. And a great question, I must say that. Um, how do you engage somebody who's non-responsive is get to their level first it implies without any agenda just have a talk with them engage them you will get to know so many things about them you know have a uh, to, you identify who are the students who are more non-responsive than others and engage with them in a conversation what are their hobbies how do you engage them, find out about what the likes and dislikes are. And people are generally defensive while opening up. But if you have a genuine, authentic conversation, they will start to open up. And you know, eventually they there was this uh this 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 place where both the teacher and the student could come on the same level. But engagement implies, just say, you subject uh, students non-responsive, then you can give them some quizzes. Um, just they bunk classes when I tried the conversation. Um, that happens a real life situation, and I'm sure that happens with all of us. So um, let me give you an example that I tried, and it might work for you. Uh, I said I am going to give you a quiz. And let's see whoever finishes this quiz on time. Mera kaam usse bad gaya because I could have easily done without that quiz. So wo quiz di, and then I said, I'm going to make a board. And us board pe, I'm going to write whoever you know finished it, it fastest. Not sahi galat mere ko nahi pata, sirf fastest is ko fill karke batao. Because sometimes when they think that they will be evaluated, they get scared and they will be away. So, you know, sometimes we you have to come up with ingenious ideas, some creative, innovative ideas. So I said, you know, you will be given that mark in the class. I would generally hand out a chocolate to the student if they were not allergic to a chocolate and uh, they got rewarded. So if you can use this principle of reward um, of, you know, positive reinforcement, that that helps. And now you can see what positive reinforcement is for अब जैसे वो बच्चे दूर हैं तो आप tangible chocolate ऐसा कुछ नहीं दे सकते हैं तो उनके लिए tangible है appreciation in the class so whoever responds अगर उन्होंने कम बार भी respond किया है and if you give them that positive uh, uh, you know appreciation देते हैं respond करते हैं the child knows that मेरे को attention मिली है and then the next time also they will want to involve so you will want to try different ways uh, and find out a balance between that but I know up to the two assignments, chai koi worksheet di, koi puzzle di. Koi, uh, another thing that I have tried is I will give them uh, a, you know a movie to watch a movie and I know ki kya concept hai. then I will tell them that I have a few questions and we will discuss that um, story in the class and uh, you know great movies we have some of them to aap unko wo movies uh, ke bare mein sakte so you will have to see the level at which my your student is so that they are uh, they engage. जैसे वो एक दूसरे स्कूल की हमने बात की थी जो महाराष्ट्र वाला स्कूल था द स्मार्ट स्कूल वेयर द स्टूडेंट्स वर बंकिंग क्लासेस और वो टीचर वहीं पे उनके घर पे पहुंच गए एंड स्टार्टेड यू नो इंटरैक्टिंग विद देम सो आई होप दैट आंसर्स द क्वेश्चन इन सम वे फॉर यू डॉक्टर गौरव यस You're very welcome. Sure, good luck to you. And do let us know in case there is uh, any forum where all of us can get connected or you know, you can have my email address from the organizers 
feel free to shoot me an email and tell me and let me know if you tried something and if it you succeeded or failed whatever it is do let me know yes participants any queries any questions I must say this was an interactive class and I thoroughly enjoyed interacting with all of them. It's a good batch. Do we have more time? Do we have five minutes? Because there are a couple of questions that came and if only there is time, uh, I can take them up. Uh, yes, Dr. Shaman, you can take five to 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll start what Dr. Uh, Bhandari has mentioned. He said, I have experienced great difference by teaching undergraduate and postgraduate students, which is right, you know, uh, and it is important to acknowledge that. I can tell you coming from the field of psychology, there is a huge developmental shift that takes place. So when they are in their undergraduate classes, they are, you know, in a manner of speaking, their physiological changes are still happening which happens until the age of 18, 19. So the hormones kind of have to balance out as well. So you will realize that students at undergrad level are more impulsive. They will take rash decisions. They will be more, um, you know, on the, on the go of the things. And some of them might not think the, the risk taking behavior is more. And because, you know, I do research in that area. So this is one of my favorite areas. So the teacher has to plan uh, the lectures and the content according to that, because you will realize that their uh, risk taking behaviors and either positive risk taking or negative risk taking is more. You know, they will try to drive fast. They will like to be on a on the go of the things. So I do agree with what Dr. Bhandari has mentioned that it is very different teaching post grad students and undergrad students. And also at undergrad level, the number of students is large. So they can just hide themselves and not be known. Whereas in post-grad classes, you have students, the number lessons, and they become more uh, oriented because now they know that job chahiye. So some of them, you know, most of them become, I think, this, they show a kind of maturity, uh, especially in the second year. So we do see that shift. I agree with you. Uh, then uh, Dr. Jadav mentioned um, how to deal with arrogant behavior of students. A great question. Um, I would also uh, want to mention what does arrogance means. You know, arrogance is going to mean different uh, things to different uh, students as well as teachers. So sometimes the student is arrogant because he or she is very good looking. Sometimes the student is very, very arrogant. Uh, under their students have their unity for them. Yes, Dr. Bandari, I, I agree with that as well. So the sincerity comes more in the second year students, as you have mentioned in the chat. So, um, you know, sometimes they are arrogant. So the level of arrogance, right? So from somebody who thinks that they're very good looking and, you know, they're like the next uh, HRRI to somebody who's arrogant because they think that they are very, um, you know, intelligent, academically very bright. That could be one kind of arrogance. Then there was a kind of arrogance. So my, uh, I belong to this family, you know, which have, a lot of money and stuff. So that is why the arrogance. And then there is a kind of arrogance. You have no idea, but there is arrogance, right? So now I think when we are dealing with this variety and the spectrum on the level of arrogance, uh, the teacher also has to see what is it that strikes in my heart that makes me think that this child is arrogant. You know, sometimes I might think my child is arrogant because they, they're asking too many questions. Or uh, I remember one of my students um, many, like one and a half decade ago, she appeared to be very arrogant to every teacher in the uh, department. And maybe she was, I don't know. But I'll tell you from my experience, I called her in the class, I called her in my office and I said, uh, listen, you are a very bright student. And she was, and she was, and she went on to become um, an IPS officer as well. So I said, listen, I know you are, uh, you know, very bright student. 
and you 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 your behavior is as such that sometimes other people uh, don't agree with you and they feel that you are uh, you try to think that you are a step above them and she said maybe i am you know so there was this arrogant the level of arrogance now if you know i my i let my ego come in the way i might have behaved in a similar manner but to me it was more hilarious it was funny so i think you know if you feel that there was arrogance in a student uh, the idea is to politely ask them how are they doing in their lives is everything okay because sometimes that arrogance could be a defense to something else they're dealing with something in their lives which is so pertinent and they don't know how to deal with it so and it is easier to deal with arrogant uh, students i must tell you it is actually very easy so if you call them if you speak to them and tell them that this is you know this is you wish them really well uh, but this requires again some kind of courage and paradigm shift but um, not uh, telling them in front of all the students i think that has been helpful uh, all of us deal with children you know such students in our classes at least three four students who, are, who do behave in this manner which might come across as egoistic but i have dealt with it in a fashion where i will give them attention as well i will uh, respond to their queries rather than not responding and then i saw you know over a period of time if i kept patience uh, in in a year or year and a half there was a sea change in my students from becoming you know showing that attitude and then because i dealt with them in exactly the same fashion as dealt with other students i gave them as much importance rather than not giving importance because then they want to get more attention they want to be in the center of attention so that i think that interplay has worked uh, if you feel somebody really needs to be called to the office do that but even in the class give them equal importance ask them the same kind of questions and you will see if we kept patience over a period of time they mellow down and that's helpful i hope that answers though there are different ways of answering this question dr jadhav does that make sense to you thank you for asking the question and dr bhandari do read on dr rajiv bhangiani i think i will just write that here for everybody because he's written some papers on open uh, textbook thing um so oh, it just went to one person uh, wait uh everybody just wait a bit Oh, is that right? Maybe we have met then, Dr. Amandeep. I'm not too sure. Do give me a call. Do come and meet me. I'm always very happy to meet people from university. are the organizers going to come now yes sure. yeah. okay i'll i'll just mention my in the free cpt for the ones who want to that's i don't mind sharing my phone number as well because it's always helpful to hear from so the way one can i give my uh, contact number here organizers sure ma'am I'm always happy to hear from fellow colleagues.
thank you very much ma'am for your interesting lecture it was very wonderful session you always make us very promising yes we also smile this big after your expert sessions thank you so much ma'am for being with us thank you for for inviting thank you for giving me this chance thank you so much ma'am okay so can we uh, can i log off now this conference will now be recorded A very good morning, sir. On behalf of the Department of Business Administration, I welcome the expert speaker of the session, Dr. Sandeep Singhal, Professor and Head, Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, NITTTR, Chandigarh. Now I would request Jaspreet Kaur to kindly introduce the expert speaker of the session. Jaspreet, please. Uh, morning, ma'am. Morning. Good morning, Dr. Sandeep Singh Gill. I just speak on behalf of Department of Business Administration, GNDEC Ludhiana, welcome you to this two week FTP program sponsored by AICT New, New Delhi, AQUIS. Now, I would like to introduce our expert speaker, Dr. Sandeep Singh Gill. Dr. Sandeep Singh Gill has been working as professor head ECE. NITTTR Chandigarh since 27th March 2019. He has PhD in Electronics and Communication Engineering from NIT Hamirpur, MTech ECE from GNDEC Ludhiana, MBA from PAU Ludhiana, BE E and EC honors from Punjabi University Chandigarh. Dr. Gill has 22 experience, 22 years in experience from teaching four years in industry, positions like Dean Administration and Dean Academic, Professor and Head ECE Department, Gurnanak Dev Engineering College, Ludhiana, and Senior Executive, Wipro Limited. His areas of specializations are VLCSI, CAD, Soft Computing Techniques, Engineering Management, Educational Institution Brandings. He has 100... 15 master dissertations, three completed PhD dissertations, and five pursuing. Dr. Gill has three publications in national journals, 57 publications in international journals. He has been presented in conferences and seminars 115 times. He has technical proceedings, four, and he has five books and books chapters. Four projects has been carried out by Dr. Gill and one patent is applied for. Welcome you, Hassan. Over to you now. Uh, thank you, Jaspreet. And uh, thank you, Dr. Navdeep, for inviting me over for the FDP uh, so that I get the opportunity to interact with all of you. Uh, today, uh, we should talk about a topic which is slightly different from our normal teaching learning issues which we talk about. Uh, as we all know, we, we are from different institutes. I suppose some of you would be from government institutes, somebody, some of you from private institutes, others from universities also. So each institute has a different scenario in which they are operating. However, uh, one common link which is there, whether it is an IIT, it is 
a state college it is a private college it is a private university a state university one common link which is there is that we are facing issues regarding resources and we are all facing issues regarding enrollments so whom do we teach if we don't get the right kind of people in our institute oh, how do we give them the right learning experience how do we enhance their learning experience for all that one thing which has become very very essential is that we need to brand our institutions so without branding an institution number of institutions have increased drastically uh, every every nook and corner we have a professional institute we have central universities we have state universities we have private universities everybody is basically fighting for the same uh, cake the same number of students available how do we ensure that we get the right kind of students for our institute so that we can enhance the learning experience that is what we will be talking about today so before we start with that first of all we should be very clear about the functions of higher education what does higher education actually do what what is it all about first thing which we look at when we talk of higher education is that it is there to generate produce and transmit new knowledge that is the most essential part of a higher education institute because it is a forum where knowledge can be exchanged it is produced it is then gen transmitted to your students and your students also are a partner in this whole process then another very important aspect is why do students study a large majority of them study to get some gainful employment so you need to prepare your students for some gainful employment another aspect of higher education another function of higher education is to promote new skills and capabilities that are suited to the changing global setting if you are not able to uh, innovate not able to uh, start new courses not able to modify your curricula so that the latest global changes are included in your curricula in your courses you are not able to impart new skills and capabilities then you are going to lose out in this competitive educational field and you losing out means your students would not be prepared for gainful employment another function of higher education is to build an intellectual platform for new disciplines and their development uh, now a lot of uh, emphasis is being given by the government of india to the uh, skill development courses then they are looking at new education policy where again a push is there for uh, training students in cutting edge technologies there is a push to make them more composite as a learner uh, there is a push to promote lifelong learning in them and there is also a push to create entrepreneurs out of students so all this in think can be done if you are able to provide a gainful intellectual platform for new disciplines and their development because we as teachers need to uh, uh, remodify or innovate ourselves also we need to retrain ourselves also so that whatever we have learned that is enhanced as per the needs of the latest uh, industry or the latest research needs or needs of the market another important function of higher education is to increase social inclusion and promote greater educational opportunities what we mean by social inclusion is that all segments of the society should be having access to uh, avenues of good education uh, irrespective of caste creed gender everybody should be having access to uh, education and ed educational opportunities if you don't have the kind of money required you need to be provided certain scholarships if you don't have uh, the facilities to train yourselves to appear for a exam you need to be provided coaching facilities to appear for entrance for admissions in good exam so social inclusion is required the reservations in fact are already part of our structure in india and in fact it is part of some kind of social inclusion initiatives are there globally 
in every country it may not be directly reservation but there will be other ways and now uh, for the last few years social inclusion and the greater educational opportunities are being provided to girl students in engineering seats are reserved in uh, central engineering institute for girl students so that is another way because less girl students were coming into engineering so that is again trying to make social inclusion in a educational institute then another aspect is to provide a comprehensive range of discipline learning areas you need to have a wide range of specialties wide range of uh, electives in your curricula then increase the industry interaction between industry and the university very important because finally students most of them would be employed by the industry so this industry institute interaction is the bulwark against which a good institute is made whenever a good student who scores well in an entrance exam most of us would be from professional institutes so what that student would be looking at is number one he'll look at a, the placement record of the institute he is going in for if he's choosing an institute he has the marks or the rank to choose any institute he wants to the first thing he is looking at is uh, the placement part of it second thing he will be looking at is the branch or the field of study which has higher placement during those uh, that admission year so that is something which a student as your stakeholder would be looking at and as a teacher in this industry institute interaction we are looking at help from the industry in terms of uh, financial help in terms of laboratory support in terms of project support we are also looking at internships teachers are also now being asked to go into industry for uh, industrial training so all these things are part of an industry institute interaction industries involved in your bogs industries involved in your board of studies academic councils also so they are on board attempt is being made to keep them on board throughout every function wherever decision making is required in a educational institute then uh, another function of higher education is to promote stronger links between the community and the university university or a institute cannot uh, operate in a vacuum and they need to have strong links with the community in which they are operating those links could be in terms of extension education in terms of uh, giving back to the community which has uh, given them uh, the facility or the space or the freedom to function in, within it that giving back could be in terms of uh, finding solutions to some common problems in that community promoting a culture of uh, cleanliness a culture of social responsibility within that community solving certain issues regarding educational needs in that community in terms of children also uh, taking adult education classes so many ways in which you can strengthen your links then a higher education institution also is uh required to influence social issues policies and practice across a national and international setting students in a good institute are always uh, agitated or excited when certain changes take place in the society and they react accordingly and if that reaction that uh, discussion stays within limits of law and order in a healthy kind of a setting it is uh, always considered to be very good because the vision the horizon of a student his thinking all those things they expand once they are interacting with the society as a whole and once they are giving their opinion or taking part or uh, trying to influence social issues uh, this thing sometimes trouble certain uh, governments also and they try to push their own agendas also in institutes but then that is part of the process so when we talk of a higher educational institution what do the stakeholders want of a higher education institution a university or an institute has been promoted by somebody who is basically a stakeholder 
your staff is your stakeholder your students are your stakeholders you have so many stakeholders a stakeholder view would be either highly altruistic that is it will be guided by concern for the best interests of the institution in the society itself or highly self interested based on personal or vested interests so stakeholder could be either having a opinion which is about larger good of the society and the institution or he could be having a highly self interested kind of view he is there to somehow make money out of an institute or something like that or normally it would be a combination of the two so whenever a stakeholder is having some view of that that view could be either one of those two or a combination and uh, one example could be a government your government in a country or a state where you are operating what the what would be their need what would they want the university to do they they want the university to be cost effective so that the government funding is minimized they want it to be efficient they want it to be effective and diverse diverse in terms of uh, faculty diverse in terms of students meaning that students from every uh, area of the country should be there students even international students should be there there should be diversity in terms of economic uh, this thing of the students also diverse in terms of gender also so all those kind of diversities are expected of a stake by a government as a stakeholder parallelly uh, stakeholders will also have different levels of interest in different levels of power or influence in higher education they would naturally uh, try to influence the higher education scenario that influence could be a very large scale in terms of like launching a new educational policy as it is wherein the agenda of a stakeholder is pushed or it could be in terms of uh, a smaller interest in terms of uh, recruiting certain people they want in a higher education institution or it could be in terms of getting a director there who can serve their interests so all those things are at different levels where stakeholders have some kind of an interest so we'll just look at how these interests will vary a top tier university was recently reviewed and the report from the re review committee it will tell us how radically different perspectives come out from that university's many stakeholders so just look at these comments and see whether these views are consistent with those held at your own university or institute uh, you can always try to match the trustees of the university what that study what did it show they want that our department should be accountable they should be fiscally balanced financially balanced they should be research active they should be high profile and focused on our university strategy that is what the trustees are looking at now the researchers in that university in another stakeholder group they want that we would like an increase in the funds for our research they are looking at a smaller aspect of the functioning that is funding of the research they would look at improved facilities and more administrative support and they would also like better employment conditions and more respect so that is what a researcher in a university or a stakeholder would look at faculty in that university similar to researchers would welcome improved facilities they would also welcome administrative support and they would also be looking at a reduced workload they would also look at enhanced leadership better leadership and better recognition better job promotion avenues job development opportunities self development opportunities so all those things the faculty would be looking at as a stakeholder students the most important stakeholder they would want more quality time with their instructors teachers and uh, they would look at uh, classes with smaller number of uh, students uh, more student teacher ratio uh, better student teacher ratio so they are also looking at uh, reducing the number of cl classes also they are looking at paying a lot but facilities not matching to that that is a concern they have they say we pay a lot to study here but facilities are outdated and don't meet our needs so all these things are the concern of a student as a stakeholder now administrative groups within the university would like to 
engage with the faculty and influence educational decision making that is what they would be looking at community around your university around that university which whose study we are looking at they would want a more active productive link with the university they would look at a stronger engagement and a sense that academics are attuned to the wider environment in which they operate so they want uh, the university to be sensitive to the needs of the community around it for example if you are uh, operating in say we are looking at this course from ludhiana so ludhiana is an industrial town uh, institute or a college operating in ludhiana the, what would the community expect the community would expect that they uh, launch certain courses which are directly beneficial to the industry in that city so that trained manpower which is directly employable without retraining that is available for the industry so that is something which our institute can do for the industry then research partners what they would be looking at is that the university should be entrepreneurial responsive to emerging opportunities they would like more opportunities to exchange ideas and to build a focus on research innovation so their research partners are looking at a university culture in which they are more uh, entrepreneurial more grabbing in terms of opportunities which are available in the uh, market they are more innovative in terms of their focus on research so all these things are what research partners are looking at and what are what is industry looking at industry is somebody who's the second most important partner in an educational institution because after the students it is the industry which is going to employ the students so we need the what they want is that the university should produce students who are technologically savvy they are uh, sound in terms of technology they have learned and have a strong team and communication skills they have strong team communication project management and group leadership skills so uh, as most of us would be aware of nba uh, graduate attributes these are some of the attributes which are required in a passing out graduate so industry besides the technology part which is the basic skill which the student should have is also looking at a complete personality a person should have good communication school skills he should be able to work in as in a team he should be able to have some exposure to project management and he should be able to lead a group so all these things they are looking at from the people they will be looking to employ so what does this mean for university culture what all this means for university culture is that cultures are developed through a agency of many contributors so stakeholders can have enormous sway with respect to how funds are located where resources will be put and what who what will receive who will receive sponsorship for which in turn affects the perception and determination of university priorities and values so these are all elements of culture what we can look at is that whenever you are looking at the culture of the university it should be such that you can pull in you can pull in sponsorships you can pull in resources you can pull in uh, funding you can pull in these things how do you pull in all these things if you are perceived to be of a particular standard or a level by the people you are interacting with so all these things are important for a university higher education leaders also need to be aware of their stakeholders expectations so expectations we did in the previous slides so we should whosoever is leading that institute we as a faculty member could be with those our director could be there the our bog could be another they should be aware what the expectations are of all the stakeholders and they should also ensure that those ex, uh, expectations are achievable if their expectations are conflicting it can lead to strong dissonance for example our bog would look at less funding more uh, cost cutting whereas your researchers or faculty or students will be looking at more facilities so a balance has to be found by a uh, educational leader so uh, agreeable solution needs to be negotiated with all the 
different stakeholders and a uh, mutually acceptable solution formed. Now, all this is possible if we are looking at something which we call as institutional branding, which is very important today. A faceless institute, an institute with no culture, no focus is not likely to succeed in this competitive world. In any case, with the new education policy focusing on so many quality initiatives, which our institute might have to take now, this thing becomes more and more important. So we'll, in this presentation, as we move forward, we'll be looking at what role branding plays in higher education. Now, what is a brand? Brand, as you all know, is a name, a term, a sign, a symbol, or a design or a combination of all this, which is intended to identify the goods and services of one seller or a group of sellers and to differentiate them from those of the competition. So this is a standard definition of a brand. And this definition can also be applied to an education institution. When a student say tops J advanced, he has choice of all the IITs, all the institutes in the country which are admitting students to that test. How does he decide I want this branch in this institute? That is the perception he has of that institute. And that perception, how does it come about? It is the strength of the brand of the institute, which will pull him. Why do uh, the first 50, 60 students all go uh, J advanced, they join IIT Bombay Computer Science? Because that is a perception which has been built by that uh, branch in the IIT Bombay scenario, which will pull the best students there. Why do all the top 49 students in AIMS Delhi, why they all the, all of them need students, they go to Ames Delhi because Ames Delhi has the brand pull, which will get the best students for them. So within your scenarios, you need to look at branding in the educational scenario also. So if you are looking at branding in the educational landscape, it is a necessary thing and it is just not cosmetic. Even though visuals are part of the branding process, it is not just cosmetic. It, it is much more than being a cosmetic exercise. So it is a collective representation of ideas, emotions, and associations attached to an institution. When you, some of you would have been passed out from the institutes 30 years ago, even 20 years ago. If you go back to your institution after 20 years, 30 years, you get emotional sometimes. If you have had a good uh, experience in that institute while studying there, and if you feel that institute has the branding, the experiences, the emotions through your four or three or five years stay there, those, those experiences, if they, Pull you back, you get emotional. I've seen students that touch the uh, ground while entering the gate of the institutions, they get very emotional. So that is a kind of branding again. It is a collective representation of ideas, emotions, associations, which are attached. People look at a tree which was there 60 years ago or 100 year old tree, and they try to, once they go back after 20 years, they try to locate that tree. They'll look at a tea shop or a canteen boy somewhere. So all those are emotional attachments, associations which you build. And they are part of the branding process. So in the educational context, if you look at branding, you need to brand your university or your business school or your engineering college. And it is a process of strategically communicating your values and selling points. You need to strategically communicate what your values are, what are your selling points are, and it is about making an emotional connect. So institutes which want their brand identity to set them apart to reflect their sense, values, and mission as a place of learning. That is what you are looking at. You want that your institute should be perceived in the wider public consciousness as something which will, which is different from others. And that differentiation you have to define in the branding exercise. It should reflect your strengths. It should reflect the values of an institution, the mission, a place, and it should be uh, placed as a place of learning where a good teaching learning experience can be obtained. 
so it is less about what you say it is more about how it is perceived what i say mai to bahut che colleges ko padha raha tha and from very good college i i studied in a very good college that has no meaning the person on the street how does he perceive that is what branding is all about so <laughs> when we are looking at branding branding can be done through marketing marketing sometimes old timers feel that this is ridiculous education institution need not market itself and it should not be marketed but then that is how the scenario is today so marketing normally is about informing potential customers of the true value of your product or service we as an educational institution are also providing service so we are also looking at uh differentiating ourselves from our competitors maybe 20 years ago it was not really required that you need to market your institute but today institutes uh, the number of institutes have grown in such a way that you need to go about it so product price place promotion all those things are part of marketing and all those things are now required traditional marketing techniques you can see visually these were the methods which were used and are being used for traditional marketing in a normal course nowadays and this makes more sense for an educational institution we are looking at something called digital marketing it is a combination of push and pull internet technologies to execute marketing campaigns so digital marketing is a combination of push and pull internet technologies and most of the educational institutions are looking at digital marketing to brand so <clears throat> what is there in a traditional marketing scenario it is called out, outbound marketing there you have telemarketing trade shows direct mail and so on this is interruption based you are interrupted in a normal business your tv show is going on that show is interrupted and an ad is run you are sitting in your home suddenly somebody telemarketer calls you up so this is interruption based whereas uh, the new methodology of marketing through digital marketing is called inbound marketing it is permission based here you look at search engine app optimization you are looking at blogging you are looking at social media you you are looking at free tools and trials you are looking at videos so so many tools are now available for uh, digital marketing so in a higher educational institute higher education uh, education institution what is happening is that marketing and the policy you are employing for that is the driving force behind institutional growth and it is also affecting collegiate ranking system today in india we have nirf ranking globally you have qs ranking and so many other times ranking so ranking is a big issue whenever a student is going to decide which college to go into is looking at ranking and in that ranking a big component is perception peer perception perception of people outside your system and that perception is created through branding and marketing so why do we need uh, to go in for branding and marketing in higher educational institutions one of the reasons is that government support is reducing government financial support is reducing so if you are going to compete if you need to have a brand brand will help you to get the required financial thing financial support which you will be able to uh, collect through branding is uh, fee because student enrollment would increase increase parallelly you would also be looking at online courses online learning so many other avenues of teaching learning wherein you can look at more uh, financial Uh, revenue generations then you are if you are a uh, institute with a good perception you will get more uh, industry support in terms of finances or equipment you will get more support from uh, different research institutes or research project giving institutes so that because uh, nowadays even government 
most uh, such grants are available only to the institutes which have a certain ranking and which have a certain accreditation uh, behind them otherwise they are not really entertaining in fact as a teacher also we should be bothered about it if you today if you are today teaching in a say institute in a state and you want to shift to nit uh, unless and until you are teaching your institute is having an NIRF ranking of say 100 within 100 or something like that, your experience is not being counted. Many NITs are now in their job uh, advertisements writing that the experience of uh, the person should be from a NIRF top 100 ranked institute only. So anybody who's not in that institution suddenly could be looking at a scenario already looking at a scenario where his experience is not being counted at all when trying to improve your job prospects so this thing becomes very crucial for us as teachers also so when we are looking at institutional branding we should also be looking at the diversity of it diversity basically is for why do we need to go in for branding one could be for profit branding challenges so for improving your profitability through branding you are looking at combating negative image and assertion that curricula degrees are less qualified and substantive people could be having that image that here curricula the degrees in your institute they are very traditional they are old uh, the faculty is less qualified or the curricula it has not been modified or the institute is an average kind of an institute so you need to change those, that kind of a perception. Uh, in a non-profit institution, for example, even a government institution, brand identity and value should evoke student service, academic excellence and innovation, specific distinctions. Here we are looking at example of a college called Middlebury College. Uh, what they are looking at in terms of diversity is that specific focus and distinction in internationalization and global studies. Their focus is on getting more and more international students and uh, launching certain courses where global studies are part of it. So they are looking at global outreach as their brand branding slogan. So output, the result of all that branding exercise is that they were able to double the applications over 10 years. So doubling over 10 years is a big, big achievement. So when you are looking at branding, you need to create a marketing strategy. And in that marketing strategy, you need to uh, basically uh, blend or mix both digital marketing and the good points in traditional marketing so that your enrollments, which is the direct conversion through branding, they that increase uh, in, in, enrollments can increase if you are able to increase the number of prospects, the number of inquiries, applications, and finally the number of admissions. So if you look at digital marketing for increasing the branding of an institution, certain tools which are available are search engine optimization. Then there is called something called search engine marketing. Then there is something called social media marketing, email marketing, blogging, all these things are part of your digital marketing strategies and one or more than one and most of them in consonants should be used for marketing <clears throat> so you should while preparing your strategy look at email marketing as one of the most effective touch points to communicate with qualified constituents qualified constituents are for example if you're looking at admissions students who are being admitted your email marketing is one part of it. So in this, some tips of preparing a good email would be to improve your preview text. Your message should be such that uh, it should not be very long. You should optimize for skimming versus reading. A person should just be able to get the essence of the message by skimming over it, reading over it. Your design should be responsive. You should send the message at the right time which you should have consistent visuals your signage should be consistent throughout and you should look at your subject line matters whenever you are sending an email if it you are not so filling anything in the subject line it can make 
uh, a person move over but if your subject line is something which attracts a person to go into reading the email that makes a big difference your website should be very clearly and very aesthetically designed and anybody who wants to know about an institute will go to your website so the the four c's that is clarity credibility consistency and competitiveness they should be taken care of while making a website uh, the pattern should be the same each department should have a certain uh, pattern of putting in the information and that pattern should be followed by all the departments uh, searching of information should be easy in a website you should talk about your accomplishments you should create videos about your institute because virtual tour is today very important especially in a pandemic situation even uh, inspection teams now are coming through online mode and they are looking at the virtual videos of your institute so all these things should be taken care of while designing your uh, website then search engine optimization very important what do you do what is your first and uh, you don't know a particular thing what is the first thing you do today you go to google and put that uh, keyword in that and try to find the information from google so if you are able to optimize your information so that search engine will throw up your information uh, at a higher end in the queue you are likely to have more visibility so search engine optimization is a technique which helps search engines find and uh, you, your site gets more and more hits millions of other sites are there millions of other uh, available things are there which are to be searched so if your particular uh, website is optimized your search engine optimization thing is in place your information takes a higher priority So what are the benefits of search engine optimization? You get optimized search results. So it increases the ranking of your website on many search engines. Second, it increases visibility. And it increases the online traffic for your website. It is cheap. It doesn't really cost you much. So how do we use the search engine optimization to solidify the brand of your institute? The first place that your uh, constituents, the person who's looking at your institute will go is to find you in a search engine. So if you are showing showing up at the top or um, among the top ones and how you are presenting yourself when you show up, that is very important. So you need to look at uh, so many parallel uh, ways in which you can increase your visibility. You can, your staff can go in for Google author IDs, you can, look at institute page titles meta description and urls and all that your, you can google your institute keep on googling it so that you can put people on job who keep on googling for your institute and that will help it to rise in terms of its visibility you should have people blogging for your institute you should have people who optimize your website for key terms and you should uh, ensure that your institute and its uh, constituents, they participate in communities and groups, forums, comments, discussions all over in the internet. So all that is something which can help you to solidify your brand. So this is just an example of search engine optimization. So when we talk of keywords, 
keywords are used for searches are not necessarily what we think so we should be very clear what kind of keywords a person would be using and you should optimize for those keywords many searchers use phrases of three words or longer so that is something we you need to calibrate while preparing your seo campaign local search Loca location specific key phrases are commonly used these days that is title tags and all that so you should try to optimize your keyword page you should also optimize the site for keywords then social media what are the benefits of social media first it is low cost use social media to create and distribute articles videos audios and it takes very little as compared to what it will appear what it will cost to appear in print or press or radio or tv uh, very very cost effective way of disseminating or promoting yourself and your institute there's unlimited access simplicity global reach flexibility measurability so all those things are part of your social media campaign and benefits you get out of it so you should try to as an institute embrace social media at every opportunity social media is no longer a specialized channel or a niche it is part of our life personally we use social media the most but for our institute also we should ensure presence of the institute on social media you should get into conversations you should try to get involved with hashtags parallel communications facebook imagery can, can be helpful you should listen and keep on using it for the good of the institution don't stop facebook is one of the largest social media sites and this is twitter is another social media site which is very very frequently used and it is on top of the uh, charts in a way today you can create a twitter profile you can look at building a following for your, yourself your institute and you should try to promote whatever is good which is happening promote tweet about events in the institute a cultural fest happened a big personality gave a lecture all those things should be promoted through twitter youtube another way in which you can increase the presence of your institute and create a kind of awareness or create kind of create create a kind of image for your institute that is by putting so many things on youtube also flickr photo streaming site it can be used in a very nice way to focus on special events sponsored by a college or held on your campus So this is how you can use Flickr. Search for your institution name in Flickr. Create a Flickr group. Discover photos for your next publications. Launch contests on it. Uh, invite users to post their shots about your institution. So all these things help. LinkedIn, most effective social media platform for uh, business to business networking or professional networking. So that should be used. You can create a solid institute profile there, join several groups and become involved, connect with specialist employers, ask and answer questions, give and ask for recommendations, put in any research your institute does on that, put in any event you organized, any patent your staff has uh, applied for. So, so many things you can do there. These are all social networking, platforms which can be used so social media is about so many things and you can just in a way kind of uh, revise whatever we've gone through in this single slide so so many things we have gone through not now we need to look at which channel is right for my institute and we have listed so many different ways of going about digital marketing which of them one two five ten or all of them whichever you feel is suitable for your institute its image its profile you can pick up 
so what we'll be looking at through this is brand awareness web traffic online course bookings recruitment sales leads promotion if you're seeing sales sales is basically admissions for us leads is uh, the data for admissions nowadays data is required for calling the students so many so many institutes are going in for direct contact reputation management public relations all these things are to be looked at so social media campaign is something which is about buzz it is about participation and it is about engagement it is about different types of content and some of the popular contents could be competitions asking questions quizzes polls now diversity of institutional branding is another thing which we need to look at for profit institutions institutions looking at making money a private brand they should be basically looking at a brand identity and values invoking affordability flexibility and convenience and marketing tools they can use different targeted media and online media or social media platforms so for example we have a uh, kind of uh, example of university of phoenix the target audience for them was age 20 34 average age they were looking at part or full-time employment raising family and they spend over 100 million dollars annually on measured media marketing that is the kind of spending this university has so the tagline is a brand isn't a logo it is a thousand experiences So role of social media is something which will help people to be pulled into your colleges, your universities, and they'll be looking at constant connectivity. And it will help us to reach our prospective students wherever they are situated. And a, search, a study has shown that a two -third, a three fourths of the students in schools they feel that a university should have social media pages and two-thirds say that they have used social media to research more about higher education so when we are looking at admissions we are looking at high school students will join our university or our college and a study shows that three-fourths are looking at social media to make a decision and two-thirds say they have already used social media to search more about higher education so this is the kind of reach of social media and the best practices while using social media be interactive with followers show multiple facets of a campus to show a truly cultural representation of what exists have multiple social media sites for different departments for example if you are looking at uh, for example sciences you have uh, engineering section you have management section you have sports people having their own social media site to student activities cultural activities they should all have multiple sites so that a lot of information is available for anybody looking at whatever aspect he or she would be interested in so you should also research on how to use an application correctly because we've seen even on the political front today social media has become so so powerful that the whole discourse has been changed it gets changed through use of social media and uh, social media today is the most important way in which at least a segment of the country which is educated which is say 30 percent of the country is highly influenced by that and if you are able to use this correctly you can uh, deliver your message very strongly you can challenge or negate the negative comments which could be available on social media so that is the power of it both positively and negative so when you are looking at branding of a college you are basically looking at this is again just uh, trying to summarize what we have gone through understanding and inspiring your target audience basic aim of all this uh, what we have done till now is to 
give a give a message to your target or audience make them get inspired by your message make them feel good about your institute and another thing is aligning your strengths with the prospective students values whatever your strengths are you should uh, and whatever the prospective students you are targeting their values they should be a match very important thing keep your brand elements consistent if you are looking at multiple channels of social media interaction it should not be that in every channel a different message is going out in every channel different symbolism is being used it should be consistent throughout so you should have your community and your history and your brand in a single thread and you should also be very well aware of your competitors brand identity and see that you are able to differentiate so if you want your institute brand to evoke positive association from your prospective students it is important to nail down what they look for in the institute if they are looking at research you should develop clearly research oriented personas for your institute you should look for insights into their preferences their aspirations their concerns you should look at identifying your strengths and work on what needs to be improved you should look at polling or interviewing students to reveal any misconceptions about your brand all this will help subvert negative perceptions about your institute and it will help you to reshape your brand identity in your promotional campaigns every institute has good and bad uh, legacy attached to it so this messaging and direct connect through social media helps to somehow negate the negative aspects of your messaging over the years so in a way you can then rebrand yourself if you are a old institute with a certain legacy certain brand which needs tweaking you can rebrand yourself so how do you align your strengths with the prospective students values so you need to in order to avoid generic or misguided messaging you need to clearly define the positive attributes and how they align with your target audiences aspirations and educational preferences uh, one of the things i have seen is that in this part of the country a lot of students are looking at going abroad uh, and earlier the trend was going abroad after your graduation now it has become that they are going abroad after 12th also so how are uh, the institutes trying to cover that up they are now going in for joint programs in which they are marketing that students can pursue two years within india and then they have a tie up with a university in a west country where the last two years of their btech for example or any course whatever the duration be some part of it would be in india some part would be there so that the student is attracted to your institute in the way that a uh, channel is being provided to go abroad maybe a couple of years down the line so that is how they try to circumvent that particular social trend which is overtaking or which is creating a crisis for admissions so done that aligning your strengths with prospective students values very important keeping your brand elements consistent very important consistent representations of brand there should be no discrepancies in logo color single color throughout no discrepancies in language single language throughout inconsistent placement of logo elements should be avoided so all these things are to be taken care of so some of the things which students may be looking at is how long and illustrious is your institute history so history the story you develop around your institute should include that history try to glorify it try to create a, a romantic kind of a notion about studying in a very old institute if it is a old institute or try to create a story of a modernistic institute a fresh if it is a new institute try to create a story which attracts the student what is the surrounding environment in your location like people would like to study in a place where they are comfortable in the surroundings of the institution also so you need to take that into account also so 
for example uh, this is a image from the promotion of a institute which is called lakefield college and a huge part of their brand identity is that that institute is location located in beautiful natural surroundings so they are marketing that like anything they are looking at images color scheme logo design to invoke or evoke the location's natural beauty and uh, it gives you a kind of image of a healthy vital kind of a scenario adventurous life and students and parents uh, have that kind of image once they look at their promotional stuff you should also be very clear about your competitor's brand identity very important you should be able to examine that you should see what your competitors who are focusing on and accordingly you should evaluate your competitors and give your fresh insights into your own evolving institutional brand so you your identity should be uh, created while looking at what the competitors are also doing because that will help you do two things one give some ideas for yourself and also help you to differentiate so branding campaign would involve marketing your goal what is the strategic vision of your institute all your campuses your faculty staff students alumni you have a global alumni try to market it get them into the loop dialogue and focus groups surveys then illustrated positives necessary improvements and the future of the university research or focus groups so all this is part of your branding campaign so you try to be project yourself to be a community of change agents whose collective commitment to learning sparks epic thinking meaningful voice invaluable outcomes to a better society so this is a kind of message which can be created every institute will have a different message but a sample message so core values of the institute its priorities uh, brand development and advertising would be dependent upon all those and you need to have a strategic visioning advisory committee in your institute now we were talking about all that logo is a very big very big part of your uh, uh, branding it is something which directly helps you to identify uh, in the first slide of my presentation i had the logo of my organization there so a message uh, kind of identity is developed around the logo and you should understand that why do we need a logo and how it helps your institute to create a strong brand identity so why do we need a logo because logo is something around which you can build a kind of message logo is something which will attract which will be a point of interest to people who are trying to enter your organization it will have a huge impact or a first impression which your institute is going to make it is such an essential part of a brand that you want that it should be a perfect kind of a logo all your brand materials your students should be carrying that logo on their badges on their blazers your website should carry that logo your uh, letter pads your lit, uh, literature which you are having your notebooks in the institute everywhere that logo has to be carried so logo will communicate your brand personality and for that you need to understand what the core personality of the institute is once you have that idea so what makes you unique and how <coughs> you want to have your institute to be perceived around the community then you will have a much better idea of how to design your logo what to put into that so some of the questions which will help you to get to the bottom of your brand identity are why do we start this university what are the beliefs and values university or college or institute anything what do we do better than anyone else what makes us special if you could describe our brand in three words what would that be what are the three words which would make our customers to use to describe us so all these things will be helping you to define your brand identity so hardest part of the design process is to find the inspiration for logo design so how do we find that inspiration 
best place to start off with is check out the competition. What is the logo of your competition? What are they doing? And then you will start thinking that, okay, for their messaging, they have this logo. How are we different? And how can we design our own logo, which will emphasize those differences? So you should clearly set yourself apart from your competition. Uh, if other universities are going in for uh, your competitors are going for a monochrome logo, try to make it colorful. If it is traditional, try to make it modernistic. So not this is just an idea. It is not something to be hard and fast to follow that way, but it is basically to uh, ensure that the thought process goes into designing a logo. So we are uh, pursuing this course uh, under the aegis of Nanak Engineering College. This is a college established in 1956, and this is the kind of logo they have designed. And you can see that uh, in this logo, they've tried to ensure the three principal engineering branches with which the college started off. They've tried to uh, include, you have, uh, electrical transmission system, defining electrical, you have a civil structure also, and you have mechanical uh, imagery also in this logo. So this is the kind of logo which at that time in 1956, the Institute designed. So while choosing your own design style, you should be looking at the right kind of uh, design. You should try to translate whatever your institute is all about and what inspires you about the institute. You can play with colors, you can play with shapes, geometries, graphics, and you can isolate each component and then try to recombine. So you can go in for professional help also. You can look at a classic kind of a logo. You can look at something which is retro or vintage to give a kind of solid old kind of a imagery. You can look at modern or minimalist. It depends upon the kind of institute you are. If you uh, go to an institute, for example, if you say try to compare two very good institutes in India, I am Bangalore and I am Calcutta. I am Bangalore is very orderly, very, very disciplined, a kind of institute which is uh, very straight jacket. I am even the lawns, the trees would be very well manicured, everything spick and span. That is the kind of imagery they are giving. And that is part of their branding. If you go to I am Calcutta, it is disruptive, it is more uh, less uh, disciplined, it is more in terms of having different thought processes moving around here and there even the lawns would not be so manicured so that gives a different kind of imagery not to say that one is good or bad both are great but that is how those institutes their thoughts their processes are placed you go to Jawaharlal Nehru University 100 names may be given to that university by interested lobbies but that is a university where free thinking is there and people express themselves in whatever way and out of all that expression and freedom in thinking the best of brains the best of ISs, the best of authors in india best of ambassadors in india they come out of those environments so this is a kind of logo you can have different kinds of styles of making a logo So uh, you can, after this lesson, just take a couple of minutes and try to visualize your own institute for a moment. Uh, think of three adjectives which come to mind when you think of your institute immediately. If then you ask a current or a former student, a former student to do that, and what would be the answer? Will it be similar to what you are doing? Uh, what would the people outside the institute say about that so those things you should try to get and then try to see whether all the answers are consistent if they are consistent you have a clear and compelling institute brand identity if th these answers are not consistent then you need to work on it 
So this is again uh, a kind of recapsulating whatever we have done and I think at the end of this lecture, what I would like to say is that for our institutes, first thing we should look at is we should be honest to the institute. To be honest to the institute, you need to be honest to yourself also. If you are criticizing the institute, don't be only a critic. If you are trying to praise the institute, don't be a, only a somebody who's praising. To yourself, be honest, go in for a SWOC analysis of the institute as a starting point. You should go in for listing the strengths of the institute, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the concerns. Once you've gone in for that SWOC analysis, you'll be in a much better position to understand where you need to work on, what are your weak points, and then you can try to see what you want your institute to reach or what you want your institute to be say in five years 10 years 50 years down the line in india unfortunately we talk about nalanda we talk about taxila but there were institutes which were there a long time ago and they uh, stopped being functional hundreds of years ago and the earliest institutes functioning institutes we have is maybe 200 years ago which the british established However, in certain other countries, a 200-year institute may be considered a new institute. For us, a five-year or a two-year-old institute may be a new institute. A 50-year-old institute we consider to be a very old institute. However, in uh, England or in so many other Western countries, a 200-year-old institute would be relatively a new institute. So you need to create your own message, message your own imagery in terms of what an institute is, how it started, what it is looking for in the future, and accordingly try to build your brand. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. And I'll finish. If you want to have any kind of discussion, I'm open to it. Thank you, sir. Any question? Any question from the participant side? Anything that you want to discuss with the sir? As sir nicely quoted the University of Phoenix example, uh, how to, uh, what is uh, their tagline? They said brand is not a logo, it's an thousand experiences. And uh, in today's scenarios, we have, we must have to work for the branding of the institution. We have to opt various accreditations like NAC, NVA, NERF ranking. That is, uh, that makes us uh, differentiate from the other institutions. Thank you so much, sir. For your uh, lecture is very much informative. Thanks for being as uh, expert uh, speaker of this uh, faculty development program, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for giving me the opportunity to interact. And best of luck for the other sessions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir.